I'll say this. Her leaving me was the biggest catalyst to me becoming a man that I've ever had. Because she forced, we were, we were living together. Well, I was living with her. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be clear. So who name is on this list? <laughs> Eventually, she tried to, we tried to get back together. But what happened was I did a lot of work, and she did no work. And you no longer wanted her. See, that's what happens. I said your healed version, your healed version is no longer attracted to what that broken version of you was. And a lot of times we are praying and asking God to keep people in our lives that he is trying to remove from our lives. Amen. And if we just got healed, our decision making will change. Amen. And so that's a powerful aha moment that you had, Marcus. That's powerful. And so y'all try to make it work. And how long did that work? Try, how, did, how long did that work out? About three weeks. And I, <laughs> I walked away this time. <laughs> And you walked away, and what did you say in your departure from her? Bye. <laughs> I had a vision to take the Dear Future Wifey podcast on the road. You ask, we're delivering. I'm traveling to your cities to curate healing conversations across the globe. I'm Lateris R. Whitfield, and this is Dear Future Wifey on tour. We're the Truth Family Church. This is a takeover. Can you believe it? You say, Pastor Evan, a takeover? Absolutely. Because I'm not there. Who would have ever thought that Lateris R. Whitfield had prophetic unction on his life? Whoever knew that while he was joking about it's a takeover, it has become a takeover. I am currently in Houston, Texas. I received a phone call. My pastor's daughter who took over his church has asked me to come and preach on a Sunday morning because she is not there. What an honorable request where they've asked me to come and preach at their church and she not be there. So that's where I am today. So listen, sit back, relax, enjoy the service because I know it's going to be three things. Amazing. And you know what? Don't let Mr. Rip Whitfield fool you because he's probably going to try to wear a Gucci shirt like I do on Sundays, but nobody can wear one like Pastor Evan, right? So listen, last thing, make sure you stay until the end. If you're watching online or if you're in person, you got to wait all the way to the benediction because we're giving away some door prizes that are going to be your blessing. We're talking about some Dallas Cowboy tickets. We're t I'm not even going to tell you what they are. I'm just going to let you stay until the end. We have it for married, single, we have it for online and for in person, and I'm looking forward to see who actually gets the prizes. So, until next time, I'll see you on next week, and the word is going to be three words, ba zing I love you. God bless. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. I'm your host, Latera Sar Whitfield. How y'all doing? If you're still shacking up with us, come on, hit that subscription button and subscribe. You'll be notified about upcoming episodes, and uh, we're going to have an amazing time. We've been having an amazing time during this season, and it's just got really, really good. You know, uh, Pastor Evan Connor said, I have a, I have a joke. Um, it's going to be real funny. I'm going to buy you a Gucci shirt. I said, I ain't never had a joke that good in my life. Go ahead and... <laughs> Go ahead. I, that's funny. That's going to be real funny. He said, I think it'd be real funny if I buy your Gucci shirt. I said, yeah, that'd be real funny. Go ahead. And flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you. I need you to go and give me that shirt. Uh, so uh, all the members know that y'all pastor loves wearing Gucci. And so since he couldn't be in attendance today, his shirt is making a debut. So he, <laughs> he bought me a Gucci shirt. So, so God bless him. Amen. So today's episode is going to be great. We're going to have a great little conversation. So I want y'all to go ahead and I'm going to introduce them one by one. We have Christine. Hello. Uh, that's Christine. And make sure y'all keep your microphones close to your mouth. Shay. Hi. And Christina. Hi, guys. We got old Harold over here. Uh, good morning. See, see, yeah, that's old G right there. That's old player right there, ain't it? That's old player right there. We got my boy Marcus, a.k.a. Mo Storyteller in the building. What's up, Marcus? <laughs> and I got my boy Pastor Polo. But today, but today he told me just call him Polo, so we're going 
We just going, we going to keep it real. What's up, Polo? I'm doing good, man. I'm ready. <laughs> listen, listen. So as y'all know, on the podcast, we keep it lit. We live intentionally and transparently. What I love so much about uh, Pastor Evan is that, I'm trying not to get emotional when I talk about this, but earlier this year, well, actually last year, the end of last year, I had a vision where I wanted to go and tour churches and bring the podcast there. But I knew that, you know, with a lot of pastors, sometimes their egos get in the way of allowing something that's unconventional to take place in their church. And if they, do, if they did decide to do it, then it would be something like on a Friday or a Saturday night or whatnot. But the heart of Pastor Evan is so dynamic that he said, listen, I'm going to let you have a Sunday service and do it. So I definitely want to honor the shepherd of this house for having vision uh, and for being a visionary like he is. And so today, y'all know how we are. So I ain't going to change because we're in church. We're going to talk. <laughs> amen, somebody. Amen. So we're going to talk about these, these dating streets. We're going to talk about these relationships and what, um, what we encounter. I always think about the title of the episode because I want it to resonate. And um, this episode is titled Hope in Hopelessness. Mm. Hope in Hopelessness. Uh, it was a challenge. I see what you women feel. I see how y'all feel when y'all are trying to find appropriate men because I encountered that when trying to get men to be on the panel. <laughs> it's hard out here in these streets. So these men, they like, hold on, you talking about, talk about my business front? Oh, no, I ain't going to be able to do that. I ain't going to be able to do that. And some of them just was non-respondent. They just wouldn't respond at all. So I see what y'all deal with. with uh, and I want to try to get as many men in here as possible, but uh, I'm just going to pray that God causes a shift to happen in the atmosphere where we have men that step up and resonate. Because I see a lot of women, y'all are getting a lot of healing. Y'all are doing courses and uh, making yourself available to grow. And uh, men, we just not as available for that spiritual growth. So we going we going I'm gonna speak by faith that God causes a shift to happen in the atmosphere. So um, I believe in God for that. So I talked to these singles on a Zoom the other day just to touch bases with them and see where their mindset is to see if they could keep it lit. <laughs> it was interesting. I'm gonna start with you, old Christine. Christine, when is the last date? How long has it been since you've been on a date? Um, my last date was on last week Saturday. Last week Saturday. Y'all, y'all give it up for us. You had a date last week Saturday. And we talk about hope and hopelessness. So somebody asked her out on a date. So we're going to go ahead and give glory to that. Uh, how did that work out? Uh, the date went well. He picked the location and we ended up going bowling. He's a leader, so he says we are a team. So I like that about him, just taking leadership is one of the qualities that I look for in a man. And after the first date, he decided to ask me out on a second date, a Sunday. So we went out on a second date. So y'all went on a Sunday. date on Saturday and another date on Sunday? Yes. Oh, that, that sounds good, don't it? <laughs> you sound real good. All right, then what happened? Uh, now he wants to introduce me to his parents. Uh-oh. 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 So I always talk about intentionality, <laughs> but sometimes it can get a little too intentional. <laughs> so y'all went on a date on Saturday. We're going to unpack this. Sunday, Saturday, he's like, I, I, I love the date. It was great. I want to take you out again on Sunday. Great. Now he says he wants to introduce you to his parents. Yes. How do you feel about that? I think he's moving too far, too quick, but maybe that's just how he operates. So that's just how he operates. He just operates like that. How old is he? He's 43. How long has he, has he ever been married before? No, he hasn't. So it was something so unique about you. <laughs> yes, he was. And all these 40 years that he said, I saw you in 24 hours, you finna be introduced to my family. Yes. <laughs> Christine has an anointing about her that... <laughs> If y'all see in the lobby, I need y'all to touch the hem of her garment. <laughs> because she has cracked the code to drawing a man unto her bosom. <laughs> and so, but you said you feel like that's a little too fast. Yes, I like to take my time, get to know the person, and make sure we're aligned. 
and yeah. you have the same values. I just don't want to rush into it. You have to date to a purpose and you have to be intentional, but you don't have to move too quick. So what did you tell him? No, I did tell him I'd like to get to know him and we can take our time and see where things go. And how did he take that? He was upset because he says he knows in his heart that I'm the right woman for him. Okay, so look. <laughs> you know, that's the one I wish was sitting up here right now. Oh, Lord Jesus. Boy, we will have fun, let me tell you. So he says he knows in his heart. Did you ask him, how does he know so soon? No, he just says he knows. Put the mic on real close. I want them to hear every word you say, sister. <laughs> Put it as close to your mouth as possible. Now, you no, said he, he says what? No, he just says he knows the way I carry myself, and he's looking for a feminine woman, and I exude the qualities that he's looking for. That's just good. Just by talking to me. Yeah, so men are attracted to... Uh, the divine feminine. So we understand that, that that can draw him. And it's not to put shade on you to say that you couldn't just capture a man's heart like that. But uh, what happens typically, you have to have some level of foundation to start moving with that level of intentionality. And then I wonder in those 40, you say he's 43? Yes. In these 43 years on this amazing earth, meeting all these amazing women, that he never ever met what he's learned about you and other women all up until this point that quickly? What would you say about that? Are you just that bomb? No, no, that bothered me. I kind of felt that maybe there's something there, but like I said, maybe that's how he operates. So I don't want to have too many expectations or judge him. So I'll just take the time take to get time. to know him. Take your time. Amen. Amen. There is nothing wrong with uh, the gift of time. Time will unravel and disclose a lot of stuff. Because it's the spirit that's permeating this earth right now called the narcissistic spirit. And love bombing is real. And so it'll show up like Prince Charming and you'll meet somebody. You're like, oh, he's everything that I wanted. He's buying me roses. He's, he, he put a down payment on a car. You know, you're like, but the car's in his name. But he put a down payment on it nonetheless. And he said, I'm gonna get, you're, the, you're everything that I ever wanted. And all he ever knew about you is where you work and your name and that you've been single for 40 plus years. Yes, and, but you everything that he wants. And so the reality is be very leery and self-aware about the narcissistic spirit about what love bombing is. Yes, amen. I agree. Oh, play over here. Harold. <laughs> Harold, have you been married before? Yes, twice as a matter of fact. You've been married twice. So you did it twice. Uh, how old were you when you got married the first time? First time, probably 22. 21, young, dumb, like most people at 21 and 22 getting married. So you feel like you young and dumb when you get married at 21? Yeah, 22? I was. I mean, I can't speak for nobody else, but I certainly was. Why do you then, say that you were young and dumb? Because I didn't know what it took to be a husband. I had no idea, no clue, and really wasn't really interested in being a husband. At that particular time, uh, uh, the young lady I, was, I married had a son for me. And of course, you know, that old school thinking is do the right thing. Yeah, once you get somebody and, pregnant, get married, yeah. and everything will be okay. And then she was a, a good woman, and she remained a good woman until she passed here recently, but I wasn't that good guy. You, you know, wasn't that uh, good guy. You're self-aware uh, about that. Yeah, earlier this morning when the, when the couples were, 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 were talking, I mean, when the married scenes were talking, that was one thing I couldn't have done, you know, because the infidelities and the other stuff that I was doing, what to be broadcast. You know, right, I wasn't right. that transparent. So uh, back then, uh, I just, <laughs> you know, back, back, back then, I just, I just didn't know what I didn't know. And, uh, and uh, one of the things I've learned with that marriage and the second marriage is that. So the first marriage, how long did it last? Probably two years. Is it probably two years? Probably two years. I don't really know because I never <laughs> felt like I was married. <laughs> he said, I do, and didn't even remember saying I do. <laughs> so, you know, you just kept living single. Basically, yeah, basically, <laughs> you know, basically, so, yeah. So let me ask you this. Let's unpack that. Why did you marry her? Why, why, what made you decide? Just because she had a kid? Well, no, no, I really loved her. She was a great woman, really. However, I wasn't at a maturity level to follow that through. Good, You good. know, you, you can say you love somebody, you can truly love somebody. However, it's more than love that consists of a marriage. Facts. You know, it's Facts. other things you got to do, and I just wasn't ready for it. I had some great examples. My dad, I was in a two-parent household, and uh, I knew what that was supposed to look like. However, that's not what my thoughts were. 
So then you got married the second time. How long or how old were you when you got married the second well, time? Well, I got married the second time at 40. Now, this is, the first marriage was B.C. In case you don't know that, that That's means before, before Christ. Christ. Uh -huh. The second marriage, the second marriage was after I got involved and, and, and joined the church and got baptized. And uh, I had learned by then what a man was supposed to be like in a marriage. And uh, moved down to Texas from Buffalo, New York. And... Uh, really, really understood what it meant to be a man. Uh, my wife at that time had a son, and he wasn't my son, but uh, I took him on as my son. My father once said, if you married a young lady and she had children, they're your sons. And that's how I treated him. Right. And uh, rough going with her, a uh, couple episodes that just weren't unacceptable. I joined Word of Truth Family Church and talked to Pastor Evan about it. She would never come to church with me. So Pastor Evan told me, Harold, sit here and don't let nobody sit next to you. And I get a little cheer eyed. Told me to sit here and don't let nobody sit here next to you and she'll come. Well, as it turned out, she did come, but I think she came just to see what I was doing. So she didn't stay. <laughs> Uh, but, so but hold on, I, let's talk about that, which is a powerful thing because we, we always hear about women. When I grew up, I always heard about women interceding on behalf of their spouse showing up in church. Uh, but here it is, a man, you're sitting here and you had this empty seat praying that God will have your wife take up space in that seat right. as a man. I want to honor you for that, man. Thank I want to honor you for that as a king for doing that. That's amazing. That's powerful because very rarely do we hear about men interceding for their wife to, to mature spiritually. So I honor you on that. And so she showed up just to see what she was doing and then she was, she was gone. Gone. Never came back. Never, never came, came back. back. And I've been a member of this church for quite a while. You know, another thing about that time, as I said, it was after I joined the church and got baptized, I surrounded myself with some friends, some good friends, besides the ones I uh, had uh, encountered here at Word of Truth. And uh, I'm telling one of my friends about, you know, how bad she was doing me and she did this and she did that. And I don't want to really shed a really bad light on her. It just wasn't working. So I'm telling one of my friends about a good friend, matter of fact, I would call her my best friend in Texas. And I'm telling her how bad she did and what she did and blah, 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 blah. You know what he had the nerve to tell me? What did he say? You had to love her like Christ loved the church. <laughs> I, I told, you I didn't want to hear that, Harold, hold did you? Hold it, hold it. I you wanted somebody to get on your side and say, listen, I got a sister, I got a cousin that I can hook you up with. That uh, no, would value you, uh, Harold. No, I wanted to choke him with her. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, 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 but that's kind of helped me get through the difficult times in that particular marriage. You know, she's deceased now as well. And, um, you know, so what made it come to an end? How long were y'all married? We married about 15 years. 15 years. About 15 years. And uh, just some behaviors and some things that we couldn't get on board about. As a profession, I'm a counselor. So I know one of the biggest things, and they talked about that this morning, was communication. And on her end, and unfortunately, I'm, again, I don't want to sound as if I'm placing blame on her. But on her end, she didn't want to communicate. When somebody tells you in the marriage, don't tell me. Don't ask me about my money. And the mortgage ain't paid. And you're responsible for the mortgage. Who else I'm going to ask? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, uh, and, uh, and uh, so, so, so it, it was things like that. Uh, uh, and some other things. And, and, I, and I know some of you ladies don't, don't, aren't like this. Probably none of you in the audience. But then that son that she had, uh, she took care of the son. Better than she, she took, took care of you. Oh, boy, right there, yeah. You know, and, 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 yeah. And, and, I, and I think being and doing what I do now for a living, uh, I see it all the time, where some women, I'm not going to say all women, don't allow that man to be the man of that son. I truly believe there's some great women out here, and don't get me wrong, there's some great women out here, but I think it takes a man to, to raise a man. There it is. And a lot of times, that's that don't happen, and that's what happened in my case. So, you know, this thing didn't work. Last but not least, and, and again, I don't want to kick a lot of salt, but there was an episode that happened one night about three in the morning where the police was called, and the policeman that got there happened to be a security at an old church I worked at. So he walked over to me after they separated us. We wasn't fighting, don't get me wrong, I wasn't fighting, but 
But he said, well, I see that your wife is lying and I see this and that and the other. And he said, but let me say this, Harold. If we get caught out, of here, uh, out here again, somebody going to jail. Yep. Next morning, we have all my stuff and then go back. <laughs> So, Harold, you just packed up your stuff and left. All of it. Just you said that something is wrong with this relationship, and yeah. if it's that bad, I need to go before I end up in jail. That's right, because, you know, if it had been two female police that showed up or some yeah, others. Yeah, you've been locked up. But yeah, you know. And, uh, and so how long did it take you to get a divorce after that moment? Who, the, who filed for divorce? You I or her? Did. You I filed did. for divorce. Matter of fact, I filed for divorce, got the divorce, and her lawyer, her lawyer had it overturned. My lawyer had never heard of that. She overturned the divorce? Yeah, got the divorce overturned. I had to divorce her twice. <laughs> that's, that's a true story. That's a true story. I divorced her twice. Boy, when I say I find out new things in my life, so, this joker said I divorced her twice. My lawyer said she had never heard of that. I ain't never heard of it either, Harold. I never heard of it either, but you? eventually that's what had happened. And, and again, uh, we remain friends. I like to, and I, and I talked to you about this when I did, when we, when we met well, on Well, Harold, Harold, I got to talk to other people, Harold. Oh, well, go ahead, then. I got to talk to other people. <laughs> so, <laughs> now, Harold, we're going to come back on you because right, I want to find ahead. out what these day streets doing for you, OG. Uh, <laughs> Shay, Shay, how old are you? How old are you? 31. You're 31. Yes. Uh, have you ever been married? No. Do you have any kids? No. Have you ever been proposed to? No. Have you ever been close to being married? <laughs> no. Well, we talked about it. Yeah, we talked about it. We so, talked about it. But, so, but you, you, you said that you were close to being married at one point, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, we, we, we talked about the idea of it. We talked about the that's idea. How, that's how close I was. So, <laughs> 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 so y'all talked about the idea of what marriage would look like or, you know, can you see yourself being, you know, married to me? And he said, yeah. I think it was more of where we were in our life and how he felt about me at that time. And um, Put the microphone closer, please. But yeah. I don't feel like it translated over for us to be married because how he was moving wasn't giving um, husband material. So... <laughs> No, for real. So I had to really, like, I had to really, like, check my emotions and not really base my decisions off of how I felt towards him because I was, I was in love with the potential of who he was, not who he was mm. currently because how he was treating me currently, never. So... When I say that's so important, that's one of the biggest maturity lessons that we have to learn. When I tell you... The way I'm moving, the energy I'm keeping right now is if, you, if I can't see myself married to you right now, I'm not walking you down the aisle with hope and faith. Because sometimes church will teach you something that just ain't right. I'm just going to tell you that. Church will have you faithing for somebody that ain't even faithing for themselves. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. So that's what I'm saying. So yeah, we should believe in our mate. But at the end of the day, when you see these things at the very beginning, and I call it compatibility and alignment, when you know that y'all aren't in alignment right now, don't, don't be interceding and fasting for that person to change. They whole makeup, they whole personality to fit you. That's just not the one. It's a whole lot easier just to be like, you know, I'm going to bless you with goodbye. <laughs> So that's, a, that's the reality of it. And so do you feel like, do you have hope out here? Have you met any guys over the last 60 days that you feel like, you know, are moving with intentionality? Well, um, if I'm being frank, I'm really not in the space to really date. I mean, based off of my experience, it just really crushed me. And I just had to really take a step back and unpack my experiences and continue to grow and become the woman that I need to be for the man that I'm praying for. And mm. so in this space right now that I'm in, I tell men all the time, it's, it's me and God right now. So, but I did meet somebody. <laughs> she don't say all that, nigga. <laughs> but we over, yes, girl, say that, say that. You better say that. But I did meet somebody. Girl, you just... So erase everything she said up to this point. No, 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 no. No, we're not 
generation and because really I think if I'm just being real like so like I and I told him all of this as well but he's I feel like he's God sent to be honest with you I think a lot of guys who I was dating um I was dating for what they like did for me in the present but they didn't really have value and so I feel like he mm. brings value to the point where he don't have to call me and I'm like oh let me let me text him. Let me see. It, it, he's he's got me interested in who he is, and he's a believer. A lot of men that I was talking to, they said they believed in God, but their daily routine had nothing to do with God. Talk about it. Talk about so, it, Shay. If you're gonna date me, you have to know who I am. And like in 2019, I became suicidal, and I I hit a really low spot. And so from then on. It's been nothing but me and God. So you're gonna have to know who I am in Christ to yes. be able to to be able to cultivate my gift in Christ. And it takes a it takes a um, um, a believer in Christ to really cultivate a woman like me. And so and I'm an alpha alpha female. So I don't play. I govern my life. <laughs> so you can't just come in here and tell me we about to do X, Y, and Z. You gonna have to have some proof. You gonna have to have some type of justification of why. X, Y, and Z is value, valuable to me and where I'm trying to go and who I am right now. All right, Shay. So whoever you seeing right now, I guess he want all that smoke. Because <laughs> she said straight, you got to cultivate me. You understand me? And that's real. That's, that's, that's so powerful. And I always say that the right man will show up when you show up within yourself. Amen. And that's what I've been doing. A lot of times we're praying for people to show up and we don't even know who, they, who we are. And so that's beautiful that you said that you had to unpack some things in your past, unpack some trauma in your past so that you could finally fall in love with who you are so that you can manifest the very thing that you desire out of someone else. Absolutely. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Mo Storyteller is in the building. What's going up, Marcus? So, Marcus. So, uh, and make sure y'all keep y'all microphones as close to y'all mouth as possible. It puts a lot of volume in it. So, um, Marcus, how has these dating streets been treating you? Or how have you been treating these dating streets? <laughs> That's a trick question. <laughs> <laughs> dating streets has truly been the streets. It's been That's the streets. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you, have you ever met anyone that you said, I want to marry her? Yes. How long ago was that? About four years ago. Four years ago. Did you let her know that you want to marry her? With my mouth, yes. With my actions, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Thank you for keeping it lit. So, but in your heart, you want to marry her. So why didn't your actions align with your words? Um... I called myself a man, but, my, but I didn't know how to be a man. For myself, I was learning that in the process of being in that relationship. And, but I was in a relationship trying to be, learn how to be a man myself when she needed a man for her. So when did that, when did that revelation occur? Did you leave her? Did she leave you? Or what, what was that aha moment for you? She, she definitely left me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be clear. She left me. That's what you said. Let's be clear. So she left you. On her departure, what did she say to you? I mean, you probably can't say that in church. I mean, so yeah, we're in church, yeah. But, <laughs> so what did she say in the edited version, in the, in the saved, sanctified version? What did you take away from what she said to you? Bye. <laughs> so as she blessed you with goodbye, what did that tell you or teach you as a man? Because you said this is just four years ago, and this is the only time, if I'm not mistaken, that you said that this is a woman that I want to marry. But you didn't show up as a man, and she blessed you with goodbye, what did you, so how are you taking that? How are you internalizing that? And how, and if, have you challenged yourself to grow into the man that you feel like the next woman desires? I'll say this. Her leaving me was the biggest catalyst to me becoming a man that I've ever had. Because she forced, we were, we were living together. Well, I was living with her. 
<laughs> Let's be clear. So who name is on this list? <laughs> I moved, I moved out to Frisco, where I shouldn't have been. Um, and when I looked at my life, first thing I thought about it was, shoot, how am I afford to be out here in Frisco, Texas? <laughs> uh, and um, I started evaluating some things. I had to, um, I'm sleeping on the floor in an empty apartment because I can't pay for furniture and stuff like that. Um, and I'm looking in the mirror and I'm like, I do not like you. And mm. It, it made me just start tapping into the thing. One thing she always said when we were together is, she said it because she was mad, but she's like, you need therapy. So I actually went to therapy. Okay. I, yes. Yes. Um, I went to therapy, and therapy made me deep dive into some of my decisions, starting with financial, then starting with um, where did some of my decision making come from. And it just went all the way across the board in my life. And eventually she tried to, we tried to get back together. But what happened was I did a lot of work and she did no work. And you no longer wanted her. See, that's what happens. I said your healed version, your healed version is no longer attracted to what that broken version of you was. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And a lot of times we are praying and asking God to keep people in our lives that he is trying to remove from our lives. And if we just got healed, our decision making will change. And so that's a powerful aha moment that you had, Marcus. That's powerful. And so y'all tried to make it work. And how long did that work? Try, how, did, how long did that work out? About three weeks. And I, <laughs> I walked away this time. <laughs> and you walked away. And what did you say in your departure from her? Bye. <laughs> Boy, I love what I do. Hey, listen. <laughs> Christina. Hi. What about now? Yeah, there we go. Christina, how old are you? 39. You're 39 years old. Um, when you were younger, did you ever envision the magical age that you would be married by? So I'm actually divorced, so yeah. I so had that divorced. all planned out. You said you already, you already knocked one out. Is that what you said? I'm divorced. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what I'm saying, I had my life planned out. Oh, you had your I life planned out. Be, yeah. And so um, let me give more of her in the monitor, please. So when you were, when you were uh, married the first time, how long were you married? About eight years. Eight years. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't mind me asking, what caused the demise of that marriage? So I was married when I was about 22 and... Just like Carol said, I had no idea what it took to be married, to be anyone's wife. And the person that I was when I met him at 19 was not that same person when I was hitting my 30s. So we just naturally grew apart, nor did we have God in our relationship. So there was no foundation. We were just trying to figure it out, and it just did not work out. Some people think that this God thing is overrated. Most people think that, you know, being married, that you can be married to somebody that's just good in heart, that's good, and, you know, that have good moral standards or whatnot. Um, but you said that you tried it without God and it didn't work out. So what makes you feel or think or assume trying it with God will give you better odds? What I know is that it'll work. What I know is that we'll build this foundation in Christ so that when we start to waver and when life starts to throw its trials at us, we have this backbone to go back to. If we don't know and we're trying to figure it out, like we're just trying to move in so many different directions, there's no one path. And, and that's exactly what happened with us. Y'all just grew apart. We just grew apart. And we thought, we thought we knew what was right for each other. Well, we had no idea what we were doing. We were figuring it out. That's real. Um, have you ever been close to remarrying since that day? <sighs> no. You sound a little exhaustive right here. So, this. <laughs> how do you feel? Do you feel do you feel hopeful in these dating streets, or a little hopeless? These dating streets are hard, and what I know is I don't belong in it. <laughs> <laughs> that I know. <laughs> but I I am hopeful, but it's it's like a a choice every day to wake up and be hopeful. So tell me, so what's the biggest? 
What do you find the most uh, discouraging? Hmm. I think the most discouraging, I think it's being a believer, being a believer in dating. Because if you're not on the same page from when you begin, there, there's just no hope for that. So, so you do meet guys? I do meet them. They don't last, but I do meet them. <laughs> <laughs> and so what, what, what do you find is the thing that shakes the foundation? What, what, what happens? It's similar to what Shay said. So they believe in God, but they don't act like they believe in God. So they'll say that they're a believer, but when you look at their actions, it does not align to their Give me words. an example. What doesn't align? They're trying to get your booty. <laughs> one um, or they're just disrespectful I just feel how can you be a believer and you're supposed to love your wife as you love you know the church in Christ but then you're disrespectful to me so that, they're disrespectful how they're cursing they're using they're using wrong terms like you know that I can't say right now <laughs> but they're just they're just not being respectful to me or even how I hear how they speak about their parents or they speak about their sisters. It's like, if you're going to talk about your family like that, what are you going to say about me? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's just the whole package of just, of just disrespect and just not that, um, the respect. That's the biggest thing. I think. So you said every day you wake up consciously choosing yep, hope. I do, because I can fall into a rabbit hole of this is life and this is what it's going to be or... No, today's a new day, and you know, I'm going to go out there, and I'm going to try, and I'm going to put myself out there, too, um, and just, like, just keep that hope alive. So how do you put yourself out there? Do you, are you on any dating sites? I started to give it a chance again, the online dating, um, but it's, it's exhausting. It's so <laughs> exhausting. It's exhausting. What, what do you find exhausting about it? I just feel if somebody asks me what's my favorite color one more time, I might just like <laughs> scream. It's, it's the same questions over and over. And then you're like going through the conversation for days. Are we going to talk on the phone? Do you want to meet? And I can be very aggressive because at some point. Yeah. You're going to take, gonna take yes, charge. It's like, what are we doing? What, like, what? Good morning. How, how many times are we going to say good morning to each other? Like, <laughs> what, what's next? And I get it because, like, you know, I try to put myself in their point of view. They're being inundated with so many women coming their way as well. So they're sifting through the process just as I am. But at some point, we, we have to try to take it to the next step. So I think I get a, a bit impatient with the process. But I'm trying. I'm hopeful. I'm trying. Hope and hopelessness. <laughs> Hope and hopelessness. Oh, Polo. Now, Polo, Polo didn't want to do this at first. I, I said, I, I mean, I, I didn't have no other guy. And I said, Polo, you got to do it. He was like, man, I don't really want to do this. I said, please, I feel like you have perspective to add. He said, I already got my woman. I'm happy. Uh, you know, um, but I said, I believe you have a lot of value to add. Uh, and you've been very transparent about your story and journey. Um, have you been married before? Yes, and actually twice. You've been married twice. And you're approaching your third time around, right? Yes, sir. And, and when I spoke to you, you spoke very highly of this woman. Uh, yeah, I'm putting you in the game right now. Um, she spoke very highly of this woman and talked about how beautiful and how amazing she is. And I asked you, and I want to ask you in front of everybody, how do you know this one is the one? You know, um, I know that this one is the one because I had to go through hell to realize that this one was the one. Unpack that. You said you had to go through hell, what? Internally, or she put you through hell? Oh, no, 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 no. She, she didn't put me through it. She didn't put me through it. But um, I think it was a self-discovery. I had to um, humble myself. Let, let's start there. I had to humble myself, and I had to realize I needed therapy. I needed to know that being a pastor is one thing. I have God, but there were blind spots in my life. Talk about it. That I didn't realize I had. There were insecurities in my life. You know, you appear to be so secure. You appear to be this tall, strong soldier, and you really are. But the areas that make you weak, your Achilles heel, if they're not exposed, they make you weak. And so I realized that I had to go through that for me. And looking inside of me, that was the hell that I had to go through. Mm. 
the things that were unattended, the blind spots, um, running, running from some things that I should be facing. And so um, I realized I had to do that to make myself better. And I'm still doing it to this very moment. That's good. When you say you had to run to some things, you had to face some things, uh, unpack that. What are some things that you saw internally that you needed to face in order to evolve into this uh, mighty man of valor that God is calling you to be? Man, fear of rejection. Mm. And I never battled with fear of rejection until my second wife left me for no reason at all. And that's what I want you to talk about. That's the reason. I was going to see if you was going to bring it up, but let's talk. <laughs> let's talk. So your second wife left you for no reason at all. We were talking on the phone the other day, and I was like, I need you on the, I need you on the podcast. You began to talk. I said, you got to open up. You got to share some stuff with me about what's going on. And when you shared that, I got you in that moment. Unpack that. What happened in your second marriage? So she was previously divorced. And so was I. So when we met, we had these vows before we even took vows. Mm. We basically said, hey, listen, you know, there is no divorce after this. Because, you know, you don't want to go through it again. If you've went through it before, you don't want it again. And so um, I met her, moved out here. And, man, you know, we had a great relationship. We got married. I want to plug this part to be completely honest and transparent. Um, I did not do any type of premarital counseling. Um, talking about humility, I did not submit it to my pastor. I didn't submit it to people who are, I was held accountable to in a spiritual sense. My family, yes, but no one else. But yeah, we got married and, um, and one of the things, we were nine months in and one of the things that happened, we weren't arguing, we weren't fighting. You know, we had some disagreements, so it was a great marriage. I kept thinking, this is amazing, this is it. Well, here's the thing. I didn't know that she didn't want to have kids. So when we talked about it, she wanted to have kids. But deep down in her heart, she didn't want to have kids. And so here I am, 38, with no kids. You know, I'm like, wait, what's going on? Like, what you talking about? And so she got married, and then she said that she was believing that God was going to change her heart about having kids. But the confession that she told me was that she wanted to have kids, but deep down, she's praying that God changes her heart. And when that was revealed to me, I was left in the mess that was inside of her. And so I'll never forget coming home one day from work. All her things were gone. You came home from work and you walked into a house where she took everything with no explanation. Everything. So there was no signs that showed you that she was working on an exit strategy. Nope. Besides the conversations that we had, nope. And then how did you feel as a man? You know, like, you ever felt like your whole heart drops in your foot? Yeah. Yeah, it was that. And it was even in that moment where I realized that God had humbled me. I believe that was the breaking point yeah. for healing and restoration in my life. When I tell you that's such a powerful moment, we don't like brokenness, we don't like, we don't like to go through pain, but I've been through some pain that had me on the floor crying where I felt like I cried all the liquid out of my body. You know, when you feel dehydrated, you, you, you start tasting salt coming down your... <laughs> God, that's, that's true, you start tasting sand, you know. The Bible says we made out of sand, you start tasting all that, you're like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to the dust of the earth in which I came. <laughs> When you go through that level of heartbreak, and if you use that place the way God wants you to use that place, he will take your pain and make it your platform. He will use that Come thing on. to birth something greater than you could have ever imagined. So King, I thank you for your vulnerability for sharing that moment. What makes you choose, again, the woman that you chose to uh, do life with? What made you decide and say, now I'm at this place right now, I can choose differently, I see differently. What was it about her that made you say, yeah, this is me right here? You know, um, this is a very great question. Outside of the outside influences, including Pastor Evan, that also validated it. So this time I actually submitted the relationship, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. I actually did what I didn't do the first time. Um, there was one time, one night, 
she came to me. And um, after me just being very transparent and vulnerable about my past relationships and marriages, um, she looked at me and she says, own it. And I said, wow. It's like she felt the insecurity of me talking about it. And she felt the shame and she felt the embarrassment of me talking to her about it and she just own it. And in that moment, I started to gain my confidence back because if the woman I'm pursuing is telling me to own it, then I don't have to fear what everyone else is thinking. So I gained it from her. And, and, and then the second thing that really sealed it for me was that one day she came to me and just gave me a hug. And in the hug, she just literally, she hugged me and it was a different hug. It wasn't a hug of just like, I love you, babe. She hugged me and in that hug, I was like, what is this? It was long, it was getting <laughs> awkward. I was like, what's going on? And um, one of the things she said, she says, um, I felt your pain. Mm. I felt the pain that your ex just put you through. And I'm sorry that happened to you. I ain't never had that before in my life. That's good. See, a lot of y'all, y'all think that men are just tough beings with no emotion. We just little boys that want to hug. <laughs> we just want to hug. Hugs be feeling so good, don't they? When you get Man. a hug from somebody, that just, it just feels good. We just start walking around hugging people. <laughs> hug just feels great. So what... Were you moving with intentionality with her when you first met her? You know, if I can really be honest, um, I, I was to a certain degree, but I want to be very transparent. I think I met her, I liked her, but I still had growth in the meantime. So although I was like, yeah, let's do this, let's talk, blah, 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 but then I think the more I started to talk to her, I started to realize, boy, you still broken. <laughs> you know, and, and no one wants to say that because yeah. here I am, the worship pastor of a church, and I got to stand in front of all of y'all and still say, yeah, you were still broken. Yeah. But yeah, I, I was, but um, I think I definitely wanted this to be. I didn't have time or space to not have it without intentionality but I think I had to be more intentional on healing me, if that makes any sense. Yes. Oh, player. Oh, Harold. (laughs) I love talking to the the elders. So, do you want to be married again? (laughs) (laughs) It's the Uh, pause for me. uh, (laughs) Yeah, and I, and I really do. I, I really do. I, uh, I think on my end, based on a lot of hurt that I went through through that last marriage and owning that uh, everything doesn't have to be that way. And uh, one of the hardest things I ever have to do is look at what can I do differently? Not what that other individual has to do. What can I do differently? to improve the chances to have a successful marriage. Good. And uh, uh, I I don't like looking at me. When I start looking at me, I see the faults more so than anything else. However, I'm surrounded by a a, a bunch of good folks, my true group members, uh, the same guy that I wanted to choke with my ex-wife, you know, (laughs) Pastor Edmund. I'm surrounded by a, 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 a good number of people who will give me what I don't want to hear, who will help me walk through whatever it is I'm going through. And uh, again, because of what I do, uh, I, I value counseling. And I've been through counseling myself more times than I can imagine. Uh, but yes, I, you know, I, so what, have, I have a team. So what age range are you looking for in dating? How old are you? I'm 72. 72 years old. Yeah. So what age range are you looking for? Probably somewhere close. Probably, you know. Got to be over 50 for sure. So, so uh, from 50, so, so about 50 what? Uh, you know. Because it may be some people, your, your wife may be out here. <laughs> I'm trying I, to put you I, in the game, Harold. I, I think that's a real possibility. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, uh, but, so uh, you say from 50 to what? Yeah, you know, close to my age. I, you know, it, 50 and 72 ain't close to each other. So I'm yeah. saying, <laughs> you're talking about from 55 or 50 what? You know, that's a thing I'd have to let determine itself. You know, because I can't honestly sit here and tell you because somebody 51 might be more mature or more ready 
or more fit for me than someone my same age. Good. And uh, that's going to take a little evaluation. And like Pastor Polo, I'm going to go talk to Pastor Evan again when I decide <laughs> to make that move. Uh, I know the value of that. I know the value of putting uh, someone who has insight and um, Christian basis like Pastor Evan and some others that are in my life before I make moves like that. That's good. Yeah. And, and, and that's what I, I love, the, the humility, because you're saying you could take the approach. I'm 72 years old. I, mean, I, I, I know everything. You know, I've been married twice. I know what to do, what not to do. I don't need no other man to tell me whether this is a good choice for me. And no, so I love the fact that you said that. We were talking a little bit about that back in the green room and talking about, you know, that if we were perfect, Pastor Polo brought this up. If we were perfect, we would need Christ. There it is. So, there it uh, is. You know, I know I'm not perfect, and I fall short in a lot of areas and uh, need guidance, even at this age. So That's good. That's good. Uh, Christine. Yes. How you feel so far? You've been hearing these guys talking, and I know you got your, your new boo. Um, <laughs> did we just ruin that whole relationship for you? Did we just? Uh, I will find out. Yeah. So when, when is y'all next date? He wants to actually go on a date today for dinner. Why do you invite him? Did you invite him here? Uh, he had to work earlier. Okay. So he's so, uh, but y'all going to go to dinner. Yes. Um, are you going to let him see this online? Tell him to go watch it. <laughs> He'll probably watch it. He'll find out. <laughs> so now, always I subscribe to the ideology that women, men, period, shouldn't put all their eggs in one ba basket. When you're dating, dating is data collection. Oftentimes you find an imbalance because a woman, they'll, it's so hard to find a guy that you just get this one and you put all your energy and time into it uh, and then the guy's still dating multiple women. So in this season of your life, is he, are you open to dating other people? I'm currently working with a relationship coach and she said the same thing too, don't put your eggs in one basket, make sure that you have options. And that's where you're gathering data, getting to know people. Because I did that in the past, dated somebody, put all my eggs in the basket. My heart ended up broken, and I was devastated. And just through this process, I'm learning to be open. I don't like talking to multiple people, yeah. but that's just something now I have to learn and just take one day at a time. Yeah, it is hard for a lot of women. Um, it's hard for y'all to date multiple people because you feel like y'all are not respectable women who do that. I ain't say go have sex with it, multiple people. I'm saying just, when you went to a job interview, you're gonna put your resume in a lot of people's hands, and once you put in those hands, now you have the ability to choose. And so when you're taking those, interview, those interviews, you have a list of things that you desire. And this job, you're like, oh no, I, I may need a job really bad right now, but you know, I, I don't think this is a good fit. And then you go to the next job, and you go to the next job, and you find what you find is in alignment with you. Uh, based on your salary requirements, based upon how you see the trajectory of that job going. That's how I say we need to look at relationships or when we date people. Some people could just be people that are just destiny helpers. Those are people that are just your friends, that y'all cool or whatever. And you're like, oh, it's cool. It ain't, it ain't nothing more, nothing less. Um, versus you putting all your eggs, this is the one, and then you're waiting that out. And then especially with women, uh, it's unfortunate because y'all don't have a lot of time on y'all side, especially if you're wanting to have kids. And so you're waiting it out with one guy to decide what he wants to do with you. Two years done went by, now you're 35. Two more years went by, 37. And then he say, oh, no, I never even thought about marrying you. And you're like, I just put four years behind this. He was like, nobody told you to do that. And that's, and that's going to be the response he said. Nobody told you to wait on me. And you'd be like, but you acted like and you... F no. So keep the playing field even date, entertain, go out with people, uh, uh, and just open your options up. And the one that is supposed to be for you, he's going to choose you with a hot pursuit. But not, not like the other dude doing. Amen. Because sometimes it can get a little scary. Um, so, so, yeah, so that's why. I'm, so I'm glad that you, what made you decide to get a relationship coach? I noticed that all of my relationships would last for about two years. And I started questioning myself, like, is there something that I'm doing wrong? And I started questioning my self-worth. Am I worthy of love? Do I deserve love? And I kind of had to take a step back and look at all my past two previous relationships. 
what were the issues, and I do take accountability. Most of the issues stem from me and from trauma in the past, so I'm trying to do better. So by having seeking counsel from a coach, I can unpack what my trauma or issues were, and then I can be open and vulnerable with her and get to learn more about myself and heal better. That way, the next person that I meet, I'm healed and whole. That's good, that's good, that's good. Man, listen. This has been such an amazing time talking to y'all. Y'all are truly lit. I love that y'all were transparent. A lot, a lot of y'all were a little nervous about this, but didn't they do an amazing job, y'all? I'm reminded of a story when I said that I want to leave this episode with a little bit of hope. Uh, I'm reminded, I grew up really poor. I grew up in the hood, we was always broke, but we had this, I had this uncle and this uncle, um, we would go to his house, uh, Uncle Snail, and um, in, he had this, this china cabinet, and uh, I would just look at the plates, and you know, we don't really do a lot of china anymore, but I would notice those plates in the china cabinet, and my curiosity would make me open up the door, and my Aunt Gwen would be like, don't you touch my china, you know? And I was like, well, why you got plates right here if we can't use it? And then she was like, those plates are for special occasions. And, uh, but even time those special occasions came, then we couldn't eat on the china. That was normally for adults. Kids couldn't eat on the china. And so I was like, what are these plates for? One thing that I, the guy began to speak to me uh, when preparing for this is that in this season, this, this, see, this single season, we are fine china. And God is reserving us. He's sanctifying us. Sanctification is set apart. So like the fine china in the china cabinet, God has set us apart for such a time as that person that can handle our heart with care. Because china is very fragile. That if you mishandle china, then it's very brittle and it'll break. And a lot of time is spent in forging that china. It's, some china has very ornate detail to it. And so God is working on those very specific ornate details about you, those things that the guy before you didn't like, the, the, the woman before you didn't like, but the guy and the woman that God has prepared for you will honor that. He will value that. He will be like, that thing about you, that, that little quirky thing about you, I love that about you because you're fine, China. And so I want to encourage you as I encourage myself to, to submit to this season, to submit to this season where we get our finances together. You heard a lot of people talk about uh, being healed from past trauma so that you don't take that baggage and that trauma into the next relationship. So go and get healed with that. Get healed from that so you don't have to unpack that in the next relationship. And so I just want to encourage y'all to just prepare to be the greatest versions of yourself so that you, you have to ask yourself, would you want to marry you? And if you can answer that question wholeheartedly, then you're ready for that mate. Um, I got my buddy here today, uh, gave y'all um, a special treat. Uh, welcome to the stage, my homie, Jessica Reedy, y'all. Let me get this mic on. So I'm a, um, I have a podcast, that the sister podcast, uh, Dear Future Wifey, is Hello Hubby. And um, Jessica has been on me saying, we need to bring Hello Hubby back. We need to bring it back. And I'll say, you know what? We're going to go ahead and bring it back next month. Come on over here. We're going to go ahead. Give it up for Jessica Reed. Oh, you already got a microphone? So um, isn't she beautiful? Look at old Jessica right here. So um, we're going to be bringing Hello Hubby back. And so I said, uh, Jessica, since you're going to be in attendance, you can't have Jessica Reedy in the building and not have her sing, right? <laughs> so y'all welcome Jessica Reedy. How y'all doing? This is great. I loved it. This is awesome. Hey, way to go. I mean, you really did a great job. All right, sorry about that. I'm going to sing better than I'm going to sit down because better kind of heavy. But I wanted to give a disclaimer. Um, not only is there a spirit of narcissism, but there's this sadness of extreme hopelessness. It's very internal. It's like a self-sabotaging spirit where the enemy is not outside yourself. It's inside of you. Everything else is designed to help you grow. It's when you're by yourself in the car. If you have children, it's when they're too loud. Everything's heightened. Stay calm. 
take deep breaths, go outside, take your shoes off, put your feet in the grass, let it pass over. So I'm gonna sing this song better, okay? Um, because I wrote this song during one of my depressing moments. And I got so depressed that I got angry because I felt that I deserved a better expression of my emotions, that I deserved happiness and sadness just was stalking me. And so the bitterness actually made me look a certain way. Like I like smiling, but you should see me when I'm not happy. <laughs> and I was washing my hands one day and that face had manifested. And I actually was having a great day. And I was like, dang, you mad, mad. I was like, gotta get you out of there. <laughs> and so my form of freedom is writing. So I pray that this song is a blessing to you. I love y'all. This was great. Amen. Hey, <laughs> hey, you on your way. All right, sorry about that. <laughs> mm -hmm. to be so broken and lost empty a heart with no beat a singer with no song to sing so I know the feeling the silence is deafening but in your pain lies a place a sweet and sour victory So keep walking, walking, walking Though it seems so far No matter who you are See there's one thing that I know When life it can leave you so bitter, 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 bitter But you must believe That it gets better, 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 better It's alright, dry your eyes, send a prayer To the sky I know it's hard to find But you must believe That it gets better Listen to me, I know you're scared, your heart's bleeding, but what are you gonna do now? I think it's time you break free, you better keep walking and walking, walking, though it seems so far. No, it doesn't really matter who you are See, there's one thing that I know oh, yeah. oh, life tries to leave you so bitter, 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 bitter But you must believe that it gets better, 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 better It's alright Dry your eyes, send a prayer to the sky, I know it's hard to find. Oh, but you must believe that it gets better. I was almost out of here. See, I was almost done. I wanted to die from how I was done wrong. I cried out every night. Looking for a helping hand But that's when it happened Jesus took me And he held me close Gave me love, refilled my heart Helped me grow I'm better because My God made me whole He's available Anytime, try him out He'll change your life See, because I know That this life trust to lead so bitter, bitter, bitter.
You must believe God will make it better, better, better. Oh, Lord, try to leave. You're so bitter, bitter, bitter. Oh, but you must believe God will make it better, better, oh, better. God will make it better. Yes. God will make it better. Yes. Oh, God will make it better. God will make it better. God will make it better. Oh, 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 oh. God will make it better. If you only believe. If you only believe, I was almost out of here. See, I was almost done. I wanted to die from how I was done wrong. I cried out every night looking for a helping hand. But that's when it happened. Jesus took me in. He held me close, gave me love. Fill my heart, help me grow. I'm better because oh God made me whole. He's available. God is 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 available. And He'll make you better, better, better. Better, 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 better. God will make you better, 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 better. God has made me better, 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 better. Oh, God will make you better. will make you better so listen to me I know you're scared your heart's bleeding but what are you gonna do now I think it's time you break free keep walking Walking, 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 walking. Please keep walking, 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 walking. You better keep walking. You better keep walking. I used to be so broken, lost, empty, a heart with no beat, a singer with no song to sing. Oh, I know the feeling, the silence is deafening. But in your brain lies a blessing, a sweet and sour victory. You better keep walking, 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 walking. Please, please, please keep walking. Please keep walking. Don't stop right here. No. 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 Don't stop right here. No. No. Oh. So, this life will try to leave you so bitter. Fit up, fit up. 
you must believe God makes it better, better. This life will try to leave you bitter. But you must believe God will make it better, better, better. Mm, better. I love when the presence of the Lord comes in. I'm a worshiper. And so in these atmospheres, in these moments like this, it's hard for me to get out of it because if I was at home, I'd be laying on the floor right now and I'd be there for the next two hours. But because I'm on somebody else's clock, I got to respect the, the house. But I love the presence of God. Because it, had it not been for the presence of God in my dark places, in my dark times, the Dear Future Wifey podcast wouldn't exist. And it was through my own brokenness that God created a platform that's reaching millions of people all across the world. Through my brokenness. And so I want to encourage you to embrace your brokenness. Submit to the season of your life and hear the voice of God because God is always present and he's always speaking to us. Submit to this season of your singleness. Submit to this season. Throughout the last couple of years, God has been tugging on me to create a chorus um, and I'm gonna be launching a chorus that's gonna, um, registration is gonna open up tomorrow. It's called the Lit Society. A lot of people have been asking me, how do you get to this place where you're living intensely and transparently? And so uh, I said, let's go ahead and unpack this. So God has been birthing this through me and I teamed up with a course creator and um, they're gonna show a commercial in a little bit, but before they do, I got my buddy Cassie. Cassie, where, where your boot thing? Cassie and Carl, y'all stand up, stand up. Y'all at least come to the front and just turn around quick. I know you're gonna come over here. So their episode, Cassie and Carl, their episode was the fastest growing episode that I ever had. And what, I, and what I love about them so much is I call it unconventional love because you may not know what the package of your love will show up in. And because they were submitted to that season and submitted to God's purpose, then they have such a beautiful marriage that doesn't look quite like both of them ever imagined. And so that's a beautiful thing. So... Thank y'all. Give it up for this panel. Thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. Y'all can exit stage. So um, right now we're going to go ahead and show the Lit Society. How can you evolve to the state of mind you openly confess your faults? Healing. Imagine a life where you are unapologetically you. Freedom. What could you accomplish fully showing up in every area of your life? Anything. Your new life of endless possibilities awaits. Become an exclusive member of the Lit Society. We are all flawed humans. The difference between the Lit Society and others is we admit it and then do something about it to impact the world. We keep it lit. Live intentionally and transparently. This isn't just another program. It's reprogramming destructive mindsets to live intentionally and transparently. Become lit. Join the elite and become a member of the Lit Society today.
Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wife YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.